back my sweet friends my name is emmy this is the channel frugal money saver my husband paul and i are an early retirement debt-free couple living in the state of new york and this channel basically shows you how to live a more abundant content life with less money and today's video i am excited about because what i'm going to be talking to you about are 25 things that paul and i do that would raise some eyebrows maybe or maybe be like who not the rest of the world is doing that but you are and yes we absolutely are we believe in a frugal simple lifestyle at times not everybody agrees with that kind of lifestyle now i have said this before everybody's journey is so personal some of these tips may work for you and some of them may not but these are things we do i think we also need to remember some of the richest people in the world are frugal being frugal does not necessarily mean you have no money it just means you choose to spend the money where you want to spend it and i think that needs to be reiterated sometimes what i want to preface this with is I have on my thumbnail, don't let other people make you broke. And I am gonna start with that because I think so many times we spend money to impress others. That is probably the worst way to spend money. A lot of times we care so much what other people think that we overspend on things hoping that people will see us differently, like us more will be included in things more. And what I'm telling you is, don't fall for that. I know you have heard this since you were a small child, but if people don't love you for who you are, no amount of money in the world is going to change their opinion of you. Yes, it may temporarily, but is that a true friend? Is that somebody you wanna spend time with who is only around you because you have money or you're spending frivolously or you're treating them to this and that? No. You want somebody who, when you go out to dinner and you ask for the bread to be wrapped up to take home, totally gets why you're doing that. So let's get on to these 25 things. And yes, that, that bread tip is one of them. So number one, one of the things that we do as a frugal couple is we're always trying to encourage others to be frugal. Now this is a fine line and we have to be super careful about it. A friend is looking to buy outdoor furniture and a new grill in July. And you're like, every red light in your mind is going, no, not now, this is the worst time. This is when those items are at the peak price. So you may offer the advice of, hey, listen, is your grill broken? No. Is your furniture still good? Yes. Hold on. Wait till all these items go on clearance and buy them then. So yes, we are guilty of trying to impart our frugal help to others who may not always want it, but guilty as charged. Number two, you look at every item before you throw it out as having a potential use. Everything. Every piece of scrap lumber you may have, old picture frames, whatever it is that you're going to be dumping, you look at it first and say, can this be reused or repurposed in another way? Number three, we are guilty of even though we may need something or want something, we will hold off till we don't have to pay full price. Honestly, the only thing I think we pay full price for is milk and eggs. <laughs> I'm like, could you kind of need that? And milk doesn't always go on sale and eggs sometimes don't. But other than that, whether it be clothing, furniture, whatever it is, we will not pay full price for it. Number four, you go into a store and you look at convenience foods. You go down that frozen food aisle or that boxed food aisle and you look at it and you say to yourself, I can make this cheaper and healthier on my own. And we are so guilty of that. I will look at a pizza and see a $7 frozen pizza and it looks so good. And I'll be like, wait a minute, I can make that for a, under a dollar at home. What am I doing? So yes, we are guilty 
of looking at convenience items and walking away from them because, hey, you can make them healthier and better at home. Number five, we shop loss leaders at several different stores. A loss leader is an item that a grocery store usually will mark down significantly and not make a huge profit on it. But their hope is you will come into that store, be lured in by that loss leader price on several items and buy more from their store or possibly be a new customer coming in, fall in love with the store and then pay regular price for everything else. What we do is we look at the flyers, we shop the loss leaders at stores that are close and convenient to us. It makes such sense to buy this here or buy this there. Now, if they're miles apart, that's not what I'm talking about. But we have four supermarkets within maybe a four mile radius of us. So we shop loss leaders a lot of the time. Number six, we are guilty of getting the Sunday paper, not for the news, but for coupons. That's it. I don't even read the Sunday paper, but there's so many good coupons in that Sunday paper. That's why we buy it. So that's something else we do. Number seven, we will put blankets on and we will take blankets off to avoid putting the heat up or lowering the air conditioning. Absolutely. I'll throw an extra blanket on in the fall for as long as we can before that heat goes on. And as far as air conditioning, well, if we have to sleep with a sheet and keep our air conditioner on low, works perfectly and you save a lot of money. Number eight, if we notice any kind of increase on any of our bills, we call the company immediately. If there is a dollar surcharge or a dollar extra in taxes or fees, you know I am on that phone calling and asking why. Why is this on here? Now, maybe you can't be bothered with this, but that dollar, if it's not supposed to be given away, shouldn't be given away. If they are not due that dollar and there is an error, then I need to make sure they know that that's an error. Because you figure if 12,000 people have a dollar error on a bill, nobody brings attention to it. That's $12,000 that company has just made at our expense. So check every bill you get carefully. Number nine, we will shop discount food racks and see what they offer and then create meals around those discounted foods. So if we go into, let's say my local stop and shop, and they have always discounted produce. I will go back there, see what's there, possibly make a meal from something that's on there, whether it be broccoli or string beans, or maybe a truckload of bananas at 10 cents a pound. I will pick them up and incorporate them in our foods for the week. That is a great way to save some money. Number 10, people will drive by our home and think we're not home because there is not a light on in this house. We really try to be vigilant about that. So I have, oh, Em, we, we were gonna stop by last night, but we didn't see you home. None of the lights were on. Well, of course not. We're sitting in the living room and the TV's on. We've got a little lamp next to us. We don't need the house blazing with lights. That's a waste of money for sure. Number 11, you can look at a shelf in a frugal person's home, and I guarantee you somewhere in their home will be a shelf with empty glass jars that once held pasta sauce or maybe olives, condiments, guarantee it. And they will be in there fresh, clean, and ready to use. One of the best free things is glass storage from foods we buy. The only point I can emphasize is you make sure you wash them out well before you store anything in there hot, soapy, sudsy water. That is a great way to get storage containers for absolutely free. Number 12, you come to my house, there will be small packets of condiment, sugar, whatever, in the bottom drawer of my refrigerator. From if we ever, which we do very, very rarely, but if we go through a drive-through or get takeout once in a blue moon, whatever condiments they offer us, we take them. Would you like ketchup? Yes, please. Do you need some sweet and sour sauce with that? Yes, please. And then we keep them. It's not like we're taking something that isn't ours, that isn't do us, but why throw that away? 
It's perfectly fine. Store it in the refrigerator and use it when you need it. Number 13, look in our refrigerator and you'll see little containers of this and little containers of that. And I will produce a gourmet meal with it. And you can too. So important is save those leftovers and repurpose them into something delicious. Even if it's a half a cup of cooked carrots, that can go into a stew, that can go into a side dish, that can go into rice. Don't waste food. Everything that's left over can be repurposed into another dish. Number 14, we will never ever buy a book unless we take it out of the library first and absolutely 100% fall in love with it. Hands down, has to be the best book ever. Why would you buy a book if you don't even know you like it? We will always take a book out of the library first, see if we like it, and then we will purchase it at that point, used if we really want it. Number 15, if you stay overnight in our home when we have overnight guests, you will always find next to the bed or in the bathroom little bottles of shampoo, conditioner, and soaps from hotels we have stayed at. We take them home with us. We don't leave them there. Why not? We've paid for them. They're going to toss them. So we just take them and we use them for guests or if we travel, they'll go into our overnight bag. They are another freebie. I look at it when you pay for a hotel room because if you leave them there, they're going to assume maybe you open them, take them home with you. Don't leave them there. Number 16, at a restaurant, and I started with this, there's a beautiful basket of bread and breadsticks in the middle. We asked to take them home. They are going to toss them out. And I would not do this, I have to be honest. Now, I guess I'm breaking my own rule, but if we were out with tons of friends, I wouldn't necessarily do this tip. I have to be honest with you. I think I would be a little embarrassed. Now, a lot of you would be like, no, Emmy, don't be, do it. Don't let people make you broke. But I think in this case, if it was just Paul and I or my immediate family and I, I would definitely take the bread home. But if I was out with a group of friends, I don't think I'd be the one to be like, um, can I have the bread to take home? I have to be honest. But when we're out, Paul and I, or if my brothers, I have no problem, we take the bread home. They're going to toss it out. And that is really being wasteful. Number 18. Every article of clothing that is ripped or has become ratty, yucky, we look at it as a rag. I don't think a piece of clothing leaves this house in the garbage unless it has been used as a rag for something, whether to mop the floor or to clean the bathroom or Paul uses old t-shirts or whatever out in the garage. We look at every piece of old discarded clothing as a rag to repurpose. Number 19, you can find me using Q-tips to get every little drop of makeup out of a jar, out of eyeshadow, out of blush, out of a lipstick tube. There is usually so much left in those containers and we toss them. It is amazing how much more blush is in the corners of a compact or how much lipstick is really left in the bottom of the cylinder that you can't twist up anymore. Don't waste these items. You'll get a couple of more applications from them. Absolutely sure. Number 20, you'll open our refrigerator. Guarantee you'll see condiment containers upside down. <laughs> you'll see mustard containers, ketchup containers, everything. Salad dressing, only to make sure we're getting that last bit out of it. It's wasteful, don't do it. Just be careful when you open them that they don't come splurting out at you, which has happened to us. But yes, we store all our condiments as they're getting down to the end, upside down. There is so much still in that bottle that people just throw away thinking they can't get any more out of it. I hope you're still with me. Number 21, I can go into a store and tell you where every clearance rack is. When we walk into a store, you know how people browse departments? Nope, I can tell you where the clearance racks are and that's what we make a beeline for. 
We know specifically in, let's say, Kohl's, if I have to run into Kohl's or in a food store where the discounted bread is, we can tell you where every discounted rack in a store is because that's where we shop. My husband would make fun of me. We would go into Macy's if it was the end of a season and they had their super 90% off at Macy's and I had a 10 off 30 coupon, my husband would be amazed that I'd be like, this is, we're here. And he'd be like, how did you, you just know where the clearance racks are. And what's great about stores is they usually do keep them in the same place. So that's super helpful. Number 22, you know you're frugal when you use your old toothbrush as a cleaning device. And yes, we do that. When your old toothbrushes become like, yeah, and all the bristles are every which way, this is a manual toothbrush, not an electric. What we do is we use them to clean in corners, in the bathroom, around the faucet, in the sink, the drains. Those little bristles get into those tight spots and clean beautifully. So before you toss your old manual toothbrush out, Think of it as a cleaning device to get in corners of the floor. It's amazing how much dirt you can remove with those little bristles. Number 23, we know we're frugal because we will go to Walmart with a specific purpose. And if that item that we are shopping for is not in Walmart, then we will come out with nothing in our hands. Yep, we will go in for a specific purpose to a store like Walmart where you can so easily become enticed and come out with absolutely nothing. Give it a try. Number 24, you know you're frugal when someone hands you a gift and you right away ask, was it on sale and did you have a coupon? I cannot tell you, Paul, how many times have I done this to you? Usually every time. <laughs> what do I get I something for you? You're like, did you get it on sale? Did you use a coupon? Yeah. I'm sorry. I can't help it. And I apologize to him for it. But I was like, you know, and I know he means well. I know that. And that would just drive me crazy. Like if I knew he got me a gift and paid full price when he could have gotten it on sale with a coupon, it's like... Ah, but I appreciate his thoughtfulness. You know I do, right? Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> but I am very guilty of that. Number 25. You know you're frugal if you're going to make a recipe and all of a sudden you realize you don't have an ingredient, but you substitute something out of the box to make it work so you don't have to get into the car and drive to the store. So you're making a meatloaf and you're out of breadcrumbs while well, you substitute a piece of white bread for it or a piece of wheat bread. You're making hamburgers and oh my goodness, you don't have ketchup, but you have a bottle of barbecue sauce. So you use that instead. You substitute molasses for honey, for a glaze on your chicken, making do with what you have. So now I hope these 25 ways that we know we're frugal has encouraged you. They may not be everybody's cup of tea, but for us, they work. We don't wanna let others dictate how we live. We don't wanna ever feel like we have to spend money to be accepted or to get someone's approval. Those who love us, those who care about us, those who cherish us know who we are. And our spending habits don't matter one iota to them. Or should I say our non-spending habits don't matter one iota to them. And again, frugality does not mean you have no money or you are cheap. It just means your personal frugal journey will decide what you wanna spend your money on. So until our next video, you know how much we love you. We appreciate you. Please give this a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. It helps us so much. And remember, we wish you blessings. Until our next video, bye-bye. Oh my gosh, why can't I keep track of these numbers? Because I rewrote them all over. Okay, um, the next one. Because I honestly have lost count whether I'm at 20 or 20. Okay, what is it?